So continuing in 12.1, which was the fundamental counting principle and permutations, now let's take a sole look at permutations here. So a permutation is an ordering of objects, but the key here with permutation is to remember that order matters. That's the key that I want you to keep in mind when we're talking about this, that order matters. Okay, and what I want to do is let's sit down here and take a look at um, these objects. Let's say I had A, B, and C different objects, and I want you to reorder them. Okay, so if we reorder these, okay, um, if we reorder these, I can have A, B, C, and let's see how else I can start A off. Well, I could do A, C, B. Well, let's take a look at B starting. I could have B, A, C, but then I could also have B, C, A. And then let's take a look at C. I could have C, A, B, or I could have C, B, A. There's only six different possible ways for me to order everything um, with three letters, okay? And when we're talking about permutations, we have two different formulas. And here's the first one, NPR, which, yes, you can use a calculator for this, but I'm not going to explain the calculator on this. I want to make sure you understand how to do it first with factorials before we get to that. But here is the one when things don't repeat. It is n factorial over n minus r factorial. And for those of you that do not know what a factorial is, um, a factorial is um, when basically you take a number, for example, let's say I gave you 7 factorial, and you multiply it consecutively down. So what that means is if I had 7 factorial, it would be 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 the entire way down. Um, that's what factorial means when you see that, and that is an exclamation point. Uh, so whenever you see an exclamation point in mathematics, uh, we are talking about a factorial sign. Um, here is the one for repetition, and right now, just write that down. Um, that's kind of confusing to you. Um, we use that formula for permutations um, when you're rearranging stuff that there's duplicates of, and we'll get to some examples of that when we start talking about rearranging uh, words. You start rearranging the letters in words, that's when you use that formula a lot, and it's n factorial um, over, and all those q factorials in the bottom is just saying that I could have 20 different things that are alike, I could have 80 different things that are alike, or I could just have one thing that's alike. So the point is, that's why I keep having all those factorials there on the bottom. So example three, it says you are considering ten different colleges. Before you decide to apply to the colleges, you want to visit some of all, some or all of them. In how many orders can you visit six colleges? So, with permutations, you always start with the total. The total number comes first in that NPR formula. So, the point that we're getting at for this is I have ten different colleges and I'm going to six of them. So when you fill this in, the first item is always your total out in front. So we have a total of ten. I'm going to see six of them. That's why it's 10, then a 6. 10 is the total. 6 is the number behind it. Whenever you're setting up permutations, the bigger number has to come first. It has to. So when you're doing this, the bigger number must be first. I couldn't write this as 6P10. I couldn't do that. It wouldn't make sense. So make sure when you're doing these problems that the 10 comes first, All right, or the larger number comes first. So according to our formula, um, that means 10, which is n, goes on top, so it's 10 factorial. And then you take the two items and you subtract it, so 10 minus 6 factorial. So 10 is um, n, r is 6, so when I plug it in, it's n factorial over 10 minus 6 factorial. So when I simplify, I get 10 factorial over 4 factorial. Like I said, factorial means multiplication the entire way down. That's what it means, the entire way down to 1. So that the top is 10 factorial, uh, is 10 times 9 times 8 times 7, the whole way down to 1. 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. This is actually pretty simple to solve this problem. Look at the top and the bottom, and look to see what they have in common. Both the top and the bottom both have 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which means, why don't I get those to cross out? So when I get those to cross out, all I have left is 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6, which when you type all that in your calculator, you end up with 151,200. If we have 10 objects taken 10 ways, um, we would write that as 10p10. Okay, And this is the highest it can be, by the way. You can only have 
the R be as large as what N is. It can't be 10, 11. All right, it can't be 10, P, 11. So that's the highest it could possibly be. So with that in mind, that means N is 10 and R is 10. So it's 10 factorial over 10 minus 10. So it's 10 factorial over 0 factorial. For those of you who don't know, 0 factorial is 1. Okay, that's something that you just need to keep in mind when you're doing these. Whenever you get a 0 factorial, 0 factorial is 1. So really I have 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 the whole way down to 1. Divided by 1. Well, there's a 1 on top and the bottom so I can get them to cancel out. So really, all you do is type the top in on your calculator and you end up with 3,628,800. Find the number of distinguishable permutations in the letters in Ohio. Okay. This is where you see repetition. How do I know there's repetition in this problem? Well, how many O's do you see in this problem? I personally see two. So since I see two O's, I know I'm going to use the second permutation formula. So how many total letters are there in Ohio? There's one, two, three, four different letters. So when I use this, there is four total letters in Ohio, and the O repeats twice. So since there is four total letters in Ohio, one, two, three, four, I put a four factorial on top. Since the O is repeated twice, that's why I have a two factorial down at the bottom. So when you write this formula out, four times three times two times one over two times one, the two times one cancels out, so all you're left with is 12. So there's 12 different ways that I could rewrite the word Ohio. Now I know you're sitting there saying, well, couldn't I do, you know, O-O-H-I, and then couldn't the O's flip? Well, they could. But the problem is, since you have two O's, it doesn't matter the order that's still going to look like the, the different reordering that you did before. So even because they're the same, do you follow me? The O's are exactly the same, so it doesn't matter the order that they come it's still going to look the same because each O is exactly the same. So we look at B for Mississippi. There is 11 total letters in Mississippi. Then I look at going through O, I. I shows up four times. S. S shows up four times. That's where I'm getting that for. P shows up two times. So when I write this whole thing out, it is 11 factorial. The whole So that's 11 times 10 times 9 the whole way down. And then I wrote out 4 factorial right here as 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Then 4 factorial again, which is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And then 2 times 1. So I noticed that there is a 4 the whole way down to 1 and a 4 the whole way down to 1. So I crossed those out. But then I can start getting a little more trickier here. Watch this. What is 4 times 2? That is 8. So I can cross that out. What's 6 times 2? That, or sorry, 3 times 2, that's 6. And there's just 1's in the bottom, so I can just forget about those. So on your calculator, all you really got to do is type in 11 times 10 times 9 times 7 times 5. 34,650 is your answer. So I hope that helped um, with permutations a little bit. Um, so take a look through these examples. Um, get back to me if you have any questions or concerns with some emails and I will try to guide you as best as I can through them. So thank you very much for paying attention.